Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh and welcome to our first lecture for air distribution system this semester semester 2 and 21 and what will we learn in this lecture among the subtopics are to see to recap back what is hashvac means and we're going to look at the airflow and the importance of airflow so understand this first understand the airflow first before um, we further understand about air distribution system and we're going to look at the principle of airflow and how to calculate airflow rate and what are the factors that um, affect the airflow itself so just imagine um, if your house uh, has no windows and the sun hits your um, your house up uh, the 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 air in inside the house um, getting warmer and warmer and of course you're gonna feel very warm very hot inside the house now just imagine that um, there is added open windows or doors um, in your house now that means that uh, the cooler air from outside uh, can comes in into the house um, and the outside air is cooler than in the inside of the house now we know that when there is um, hot air or warm air uh, mixed together with a cold air the air will starts to circulate because um, there is pressure difference between the hot air and cooler air and uh, by, by, by circulating the air uh, inside the house starts circulating and the uh, warm air will be exhausted out from the house and of course you can now uh, run happily in, inside the house because it is now cooler All right. Now, just imagine there is another situation whereby in your house there is an installed air conditioner. Of course, the environment will be more comfortable because um, now it is cooler than um, the temperature of the surrounding air. I mean the outside uh, air temperature is higher of course if compared to the air conditioner um, temperature air temperature because you can set it so how about building with many rooms do you uh, gonna add more split unit per room or just increase the cost and energy what about the maintenance and is it practical or do you want to use central air conditioning system for house mm, not really but for a building yes maybe now we're gonna have hashvac system so basically the air distribution system um, we talk about uh, more and this has to involve more uh, with buildings commercial buildings and so on it's not so um, I mean for residential it is not so related okay now we're gonna recap what is hashtag and please understand H V A C H is for heating V is for ventilating and AC is for air conditioning and the goals of HVAC system is to control the temperature not only the temperature but to circulate air if the air is stagnant then um, there'll be no point because we, we, we won't feel comfortable the air has to be circulated and the air is filtered to remove all the particulates um, dust and so on um, and the um, hashback system 
should be efficient and economic system so you won't waste the electric um, electrical uh, I mean energy and of course um, this will increase in cost and hashtag system we have to understand it is not only the compressor itself or all the four components only but it also include the air handler unit the duct works the diffuser the filter etc and it comprises of all these components all right now what is airflow airflow is the motion of air currents around an object I mean the external flow or within some special equipment such as pipes ducts and channels so this is internal flow around an object is the external flow and inside the equipments like pipes ducts and channels that we call uh, internal flow and if the air is forced to flow inside duct by external means such as uh, such as a fan pump or the wind then the air is called forced air that means we use external force to force the flow and a force air system uses force air to carry heat to condition space and then it is circulated in condition space through air distribution equipments now the air distribution comes okay so what are the importance of airflow the conditioned air must be delivered to selected areas of a building and then removed from those areas and returned to be reconditioned and and um, I believe now by now you already uh, understand what um, air conditioning means but just to recap um, air conditioning includes filtering um, dropping the temperature to the desired temperature lowering the temperature to the desired temperature um, and also um, in, I mean control the relative humidity of the air um, and maybe kill the germs via UV light and so on there's many methods all right and um, to condition air we, we, we have to transport the air and the transportation of the air needs duct work and in order to maintain required condition inside the condition space and it, energy has to be supplied or extracted from the condition space uh, depending on if you want to cool cool it or um, heat it heat it up so it depends and normally in in um, hot weather countries heat is removed from the air by the use of electrical energy and in this case heat energy is being removed from the condition space all right so what what uh, what what's more I mean what are the importance of airflow um, besides what what, what we have uh, said just now mentioned just now of course um, to provide the thermal comfort um, to avoid stagnant air like I had, uh, mentioned before if the the air is stagnant then um, you won't feel comfortable uh, because the air didn't move at all so we need to feel a bit breeze on our skin so that we will be um, more comfortable and airflow is very important to be circulated to avoid temperature stratification do you know what stratification means it means the variation of air temperature in a space maybe at one point it is 30 degrees Celsius and maybe um, at a point at another corner is 
23 degrees Celsius. That means it is not um, evenly um, lowered down. I mean, the temperature is not evenly lowered down. So we have to have the airflow so that um, at all points the temperature will be more or less about the same. All right. Okay. So this is basically um, an illustration of um, air distribution system. And in a duct, uh, duct we have duct work. Uh, in this duct work, we have um, grills, we have um, supply, uh, plenum, we have um, damper, we have uh, furnace if you need, and return supply duct and so on right so this is um, basically the the illustration of the um, air distribution system all right this is um, if you can see in the picture uh, we have a supply duct there but um, the location of the uh, supply duct is very important we have to determine where is the um, the optimized location whereby everyone will feel more or less the same temperature because if it is wrongly designed um, some will feel very cool some will feel okay and some will feel hot because the location of the grill or the location of the supply duct is not um, properly um, determined so this is very important so that's what we do in air distribution uh, air distribution uh, system design all right so the successful air distribution is measured by both first thermal comfort performance and the second one is the energy efficiency it is great if you have uh, the best thermal comfort performance but if um, it uses high energy then there's no use it is not a successful air distribution system so you have to really design um, so that everyone in the room will feel more or less the same um, I mean comfortable uh, level and the system has to be energy efficient and the efficiency of air handling system is measured by the electricity use of the fans now let's look at the principle of airflow so we have to understand how air flows uh, in duct what factors affect airflow and also um, we're going to look at the airflow design how air flows in the duct so air is just fluid like water so it can go through um, um, I mean small area big area through um, window through the small opening through cracks so it's just like water just imagine air is like water because it can flow from one area to another because of difference of pressure like i've mentioned in the earlier slides so in hatchback system the air is commonly forced to flow by what by means of blower or fans and um, the, the, the blower will carry heat by, I mean, uh, the heating or cooling will be um, carried by, uh, via the ducts. So the heat will be carried out or carried in. So in a duct, air also flows from a higher pressure to a lower pressure. And a fan creates the higher pressure, so the fan actually forces the the air to move so it creates a higher pressure 
and the open end of the duct has lower pressure so the air flows out can, can, can you get are you on the same page with me so I hope you can um, imagine the movement of the air fan creates a higher pressure and we know that the end of the duct is an open end whereby um, at that point it has lower pressure so the air flows out because you know that the air flows from the high pressure to the lower pressure all right so as we can see in this figure the blower is put um, after the filter so the warm air uh, comes from the from the outside go through the filter and it is forced by the blower to go through the heating coil or cooling coil and we know that at the end of the duct is an open uh, system whereby maybe it is uh, it, will, it will go to a space um, to, from the sp supply duct um, and we know that the pressure at the end of the duct is lower than the pressure of the fan so the the air will flows out from from this end to another end so that's uh, how the air the, the cool air uh, is carried into the space all right so the condition of airflow is always determined by the airflow rate and what is airflow rate you know that airflow rate is the volumetric flow rate of the air in the duct and basically it is the quantity of air moved per unit of time um, and the deno uh, denote deno uh, I mean the uh, it is denoted by um, sometimes by this um, special Y Ephrosophy Y um, sometimes um, it is known as Q so it just uh, depends it, it is uh, you can choose any of, of them but the thing is uh, if you write this formula you have to write it down what is V what is A what is um, Q for example and we know that V is the air velocity and uh, A is the cross section area of the duct so basically um, the volumetric flow rate is equals to air velocity times the cross section area of the duct so it depends if your duct is um, is a circle a circular duct or um, it is a rectangle duct then um, you're gonna use a different formula to calculate the cross-section area of the duct okay uh, okay remark when air is forced and carrying heat for air conditioned system it is preferable to denote to denote it by Q Q is equals to V times A basically it's just, it's just the same all right and this Q um, is normally in CFM and the uh, the the air velocity is in um, CFM uh, FPM feet per minute or you can also use the SI unit meter per second but then the the, the unit for Q is then different will be different and A um, if you use feet per minute then you have to times A in feet um, square all right all right so I believe that the conversion is not a problem anymore to you by now now let's look at the factors that affect the airflow and um, the rate of airflow via a duct uh, we know that it is a function of air velocity size and type of the duct uh, which is um, 
Din uh, I mean, we, we included the area, the, uh, the cross-section area of the duct. So it, it means the size and the type of the duct and also the friction loss. And the air velocity, which is the speed at which the air moves from one point to another, um, is equals to um, Q over A. So we know that the Q is the volumetric airflow just now, and air is the uh, A is the cross section of the duct. And duct size is expressed in inches or millimeters of um, or a diameter of round duct or of width and height for rectangular duct. So you, you may have round duct, you may have rectangular duct. So the duct size depends on what types of um, duct form that you use. All right, it is normally in inches and millimeters. And if you look at, um, I have, um, a ductilator. Ductilator is also in inches and millimeters. Just wait a bit. All right, this one. If you can see, I don't know if you can see this. All right. So ductilator. I believe most of you have seen ductilator. So the airflow um, is affected by by um, I mean the speed is affected by the CFM uh, and also the cross section area of the duct. All right, just imagine you have a circular duct, right? And you have a um, smaller diameter of duct at one end where uh, it is the input of the airflow. And um, the outer end has a bigger diameter in, uh, in, in size, bigger in size of diameter. And in the smaller um, diameter duct, um, this uh, airflow has high velocity energy and when it suddenly uh, I mean uh, wa whenever it suddenly um, flow into a bigger size so suddenly it has uh, I mean bigger space to flow so you will have lower velocity and therefore lower velocity energy of airflow All right, now we're gonna look at the airflow design. So basically, airflow design is a numerical calculation for heating and cooling loads in a building's space to find, not find, find um, the appropriate airflow rate. And um, the airflow rate in each building space should be proportional to heating and cooling load. So the, the higher is the load, uh, therefore the higher the needed airflow rate for that particular building. And the heating and cooling load should include duct loss and gain and it should be adjusted for the size of the equipment. So we have to bear in mind any, we won't have 100% efficiency, never. So we have to include um, this adjustment to um, to uh, I mean to cover up the duct loss and or any gain um, via the duct work. And the total airflow rate required for force air system is a function of capacity of heating or cooling device. And we have to uh, look at the temperature difference of the device, um, what it can cater, what it can provide. All right. Okay, this is just an illustration. 
whereby um, we have heat source and another one is a cooling source um, to cool down the hot con uh, I mean hot conditioned space now here it shows that there is um, pressure difference so that the airflow um, may I mean the, may, the the air may flow whenever there is temperature dif uh, the pressure dif when there is pressure difference sorry and uh, if the uh, diameter of the duct or the cross section of the duct is just the same from one end to another end that means the velocity of um, the airflow is um, the same from one end to another end all right for airflow rate for heating load uh, it, it, it can be found uh, it can be found by applying the formula Q is equal to LH over Delta T times 1.08 whereby Q is the uh, flow rate of the air in the dark uh, in CFM or um, meter cubic per second and LH is the heating load um, if you use uh, English unit, then it is in BTU per hour Or if you use SI unit, then it is in Watt So you have to convert it And Delta T is the temperature difference um, It can be in degree Fahrenheit or in degree Celsius And 1.08 is just a constant So it is a constant um, and I, I, I won't uh, show you um, how this formula is derived just use it um, because it is proven already um, this formula is uh, is used for heating load not cooling load okay just bear in mind all right and the total airflow rate for cooling load is found by the di uh, by dividing the heat gain or the cooling load by 30 if the load is in BTU British Thermal Unit and why do we divide by 30 because there is um, experience by the um, air conditioners uh, experts that says that one ton of cooling which is equal to 12,000 BTU per hour it requires 400 CFM of uh, air flowing acro uh, across the the evaporator so this is uh, due to experience so more or less um, it is 400 uh, CFM rule of thumb and common conversion um, like I said before there are two dimensional system used in, in uh, HVAC system which is uh, which are English system or international system or known as SI unit and uh, English system is also known as USCS unit or United States customary system and both system uh, you can use both system it's just that you have to convert um, the units of uh, one one uh, item to another so it is you uh, so that it uses the same unit all right and normally so this this one you have uh, to know one BTU one British thermal unit is equals to 1055 Joule and one kilowatt hour is equals to three thousand four hundred and thirteen British thermal unit BTU and pressure one ATM is more or less equals to one hundred and one point three two five kilopascal yeah you, you may refer this slide later I believe um, for the temperature you know how to calculate 
from uh, degree Fahrenheit how to convert to degree Celsius and from degree Celsius how to convert to Fahrenheit and from uh, Kelvin unit you know how to uh, convert uh, the degree Celsius plus 273 then you will get uh, the temperature in Kelvin and uh, one inch of water column in uh, inch H2O the unit is inch H2O is equals to 0 0.249 kilopascal and one CFM is equals to 1.7 meter cubic per hour and all uh, these units um, of this conversion you may refer to the link that I have provided uh, the, at the below of the slide or you may use calculator online so it depends All right, in the dark the behavior of the flow in two sections is governed by Bernoulli equation so this is to describe the energy of the fluid as it is conserved and we know um, in physics we have learned that um, energy um, is always conserved it can only transform into another form uh, it cannot be des destroyed and we know the Bernoulli equation we have um, the parts where um, it shows a static pressure um, where it uses a uh, dynamic pressure and also the elevated pressure elevation pressure so p1 over rho or density plus um, the velocity squared uh, times half plus the gravity times the elevation is equals to um, the same item of condition 2 and if we multiply all these terms by density then we'll have um, P1 plus Rho times uh, V squared over 2 plus Rho times G times the elevation Z and P is a static pressure like I said and Rho V squared over 2 is a dynamic pressure and um, Rho times G times Z um, is the elevation pressure all right um, just to remind you that the dynamic pressure is also known as head or velocity pressure the head that we need so that um, the air will flow in the um, pipe or duct and in case of uh, a straight duct um, where the elevation pressure um, is uh, I mean it can be neglected because it is at the same elevation so the difference is zero so in the straight duct the elevation is uh, the elevation difference is zero equals to zero so you can um, neglect the term rho g times z so um, you you just have the static pressure term and plus the dynamic pressure term right L like the formula at the lower side of the uh, the slide and based on this equation based on this Bernoulli equation um, the total air pressure is actually the summation of the static pressure and also the dynamic pressure and it can be written as P total or PT P total is equals to static pressure plus the dynamic pressure PV right and um, all of uh, this term is in inch water gauge the pressure is measured in inch water gauge in this case okay and the dynamic pressure is also equals to um, V the velocity 
over 4005, so in bracket, altogether squared. So you will get your dynamic pressure. And the static pressure is, a, uh, is an air pressure in the duct. It naturally exerts at right angle at 90 degree to the direction of the airflow. Um, it is independent of any motion. So we know it is always 90 degree to the airflow direction. And dynamic pressure is an air pressure exerted as a result of motion of the air at the same direction of flow. So just now, static pressure is 90 degree to the airflow and dynamic pressure is um, the same. It has the same direction of the airflow. And um, measuring the total and the static pressure um, I won't go uh, too deeply in this um, topic. Um, just I just want to share with you that you can use um, pitot static tube. Uh, you can place the pitot static tube in the dark facing the direction of the flow so you can measure the total pressure. And to measure the static pressure, you can put uh, you can uh, make a small hole at the external wall of the pitot static tube. So that one is the static pressure. Okay. So please, uh, to understand more, please find another source to um, to see how uh, you can measure the total and also the static pressure by using the pitot static tube. Right? Maybe there's in YouTube or somewhere. So again, static pressure drop. Um, so how it works, the benefits of static pressure drop. Um, it ha it is low cost. It is easy to set up and use. But uh, the limitation of this uh, device is the results depends on the equipment um, MFR tables. Um, and you have to do a careful drilling into things and so on. So, like I said before, to know more about uh, the device, then you can um, Google or you can, uh, yeah, just find somewhere in YouTube or something. So, just uh, type how to measure static pressure drop or how to measure. Um, total pressure in in a in a air duct in an air duct, for example. All right, so I believe um, that is enough for the lecture one, and we will see you again in lecture two, inshallah. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. Thank you for listening.